Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Happy Friday. I can't believe it's Friday already. It's been two weeks since we've been doing our online learning. Can you believe it? My goodness. Well, welcome again. Um, yesterday we talked about the legislative branch, and today we're going to be talking about the judicial branch. So, let's get started. All right. So, in our judicial branch, we're going to talk about who is in it, the duties, and the checks and balances power that they have. So let's get started. Who is in the judicial branch? Well, first we have the Supreme Court. Then we have the federal courts. So the Supreme Court is the highest court in the land. It's the highest they have. They, they make the final decision on any cases or any decisions that have to be made. Then there are also some other federal courts that also help make decisions. But the Supreme Court is the highest in the land. Now, the duties of the judicial branch are to evaluate the laws. They go over the laws and make sure that the laws are good laws. They interpret the meanings of the laws. So they find out and they help us understand what the law is telling us that we can do and what we can't do. And then finally, they ask the question, does the law disagree with the Constitution? So they want to know, does the law agree with what the Constitution tells us is right and wrong. Now the way that the ju that the judicial branch, you say that 10 times, that's a hard word to say quickly, judicial branch. Let's find out how they get to check the power of the other branches. They have one way that they can do it. They can overturn unconstitutional laws. Basically, that means that they can change any law that doesn't agree with the Constitution. Remember, the legislative branch makes the laws, and the president can veto the laws. But the judicial branch can change or overturn any law that they don't think goes with the Constitution. That is their checks and balance power. Okay. So now that we talked about the judicial branch, now we're going to be a little bit more specific. And we're going to talk a little bit about... Hold on a second. These pins get a little stuck in here. Sorry about that, guys. There we go. We're going to talk a little bit more about the Supreme Court and who is in the Supreme Court. There we go. Okay, so here we go. Let me get my pen again. So within the Supreme Court, you have nine justices or nine judges, okay? So the Supreme Court is made up of nine justices, which is the same thing as saying judges. Now, within those nine justices, there is one chief justice. He is the head of the Supreme Court. One chief justice and eight associate justices. The one chief justice and the eight associate justices are added together and make nine justices total that listen to the courts. Now remember, the legislative branch and the executive branch, we get to vote for. The people vote for the representatives. But in the Supreme Court, nobody votes for the justices. They are nominated by the president, by the executive branch. But he doesn't get to make sure they stay. He just nominates them. But then the legislative branch, the people in Senate, get to confirm or agree with him. If the president nominates a person and the Senate agrees or confirms with it, then that person becomes a justice or a judge. If the president nominates him, but the Senate doesn't agree, then he doesn't become a judge, and they have to start all over again. Now, after they do become a judge, they have no time limits. That means... They are always in, the, in as a justice. They can be a justice until they die or until they retire. They never have to leave their job unless they want to. Which is a, um, but they're not voted in. So once they become a justice, they're there for life. Now, we talked in the very beginning of this whole thing uh, when we started the Constitution about why do we need laws? And what would America be like if we didn't have any laws? After going back and remembering those things, thinking about what it would be like if America didn't have any laws, 
Why do we have laws? Well, we have laws so that people don't steal. We have laws so people don't hurt others. Make that a little darker. We have laws so doctors can help us when we're sick. We have laws so that when we're driving, it's safe. We have laws so that our food and water is safe to eat and drink. And we have laws so that we can worship God safely. Now, how do we think God feels about laws? Or, another question, how do we think God feels about the laws in our Constitution? Well, let's look at the Bible and we'll see what God thinks about laws. In the Old Testament, God gave the Israelites a set of laws. Does anybody remember what we call that set of laws? Yes, the Ten Commandments. That's right. And in the Ten Commandments, it gives a couple of different laws, some that are kind of like this. Uh, don't steal. Uh, don't hurt others. Um, have only one God. Obey your parents. And um, be nice to your husband or your wife. Those are some of the laws that were in the Ten Commandments. And actually, some of those are also um, agree with the Constitution. Now, in the New Testament, Jesus also gave us some commandments. You guys remember what those were? I'll give you a hint. There were two of them. The first one was love your God with all of your heart, mind, and soul. The second one was love your neighbor as yourself or take care of your neighbor as you would take care of yourself. Now, if we follow the Ten Commandments and the commandments that Jesus gave us, what would happen to us? Hmm, let's see. What would happen to us if we followed those? Oh, I know. We would be glorifying God. We would be walking the way God wants us to walk. We would be doing the things that God wants us to do. We would be showing God's love to other people. We would be safe when we follow God's rules. Now, if we don't follow these commandments, and we don't follow Jesus' commandments, what would happen to us? Well, we wouldn't be following God's way of living. We wouldn't be glorifying God. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, we wouldn't be showing God's light to others. And we wouldn't be safe. If we're not safe, and we're not following God's rules, where would we be? We would be closer to sin. So the further away from safety we are, the closer we are to sin. The closer we are to sin, the further away from God we are. The further we are away from a relationship with God. So that's what happens when we don't follow the rules. But when we do follow God's rules, we are close to safety. We are close to God and away from sin. So, by hearing about that, well, you know what God says about the laws in the Bible? What do you think God would say about the constitutional laws? Do you think he would want us to follow the constitutional laws? Yes, because when we follow the constitutional laws, we are staying safe. We are staying um, closer to him because we are further away from sin when we don't steal, when we don't hurt others, when we are driving safely, and when our food and water is safely. We are closer to to God and further away from sin. Now it says in Psalms, let me get it out for you. There you go. Okay. It says in Psalms 119, verses 10 and 11, With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So in my whole heart, I'm seeking God, so that I and I don't wander from the commandments. I don't step away from His laws. I stay close to His laws. And when you stay close to His law and you have His word in your heart, then sin is far away from us. So following the laws, whether in the Constitution and of course in the Bible, we stay safe and we stay close to God 
and away from sin. All right, so this week we've been working on our trifold, our pamphlet right here. So today we are finally going to finish our pamphlet and we're going to complete the judicial branch. So in the judicial section of our pamphlet, I want you to write who is in the judicial branch, what their duties are, how do they check the powers of other branches, and I want you to write in here, why do we need laws? Explain to me why laws are good for us and why laws are important for us. All right? Okay. Now, it is the weekend. Almost. Cannot believe, like I said before, that it has been two weeks since we've been doing this. I hope you guys have been, have been being safe and having a good time. I have enjoyed doing this. I would prefer to see you guys. I miss you guys very much. But this has been kind of fun teaching you guys in my house. It's interesting. Um, if you have any questions on any of your assignments, please email your homeroom teacher and take a picture of your whole pamphlet, all three of them, and send it to your homeroom teacher. Again, I hope you guys are being safe. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you next week. Bye.